Tonight was supposed to be a night uh, we're celebrating as we take a look at the continuing rivalry between Joey Stone and Brian Pashnag and a look ahead into the final six races of season two of the Corley. But obviously, um, after the tragedy that took place on Sunday involving Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter, and seven others who were killed in a helicopter crash in Calabasas, California, um, is now turned to more of a tribute to the man known as the Black Mamba in the NBA League is a 16-time NBA All-Star, a five-time champion with the Lakers, and a former league MVP. Um, Cody, um, even though you and I, were not really big on basketball, but when you hear the name Kobe, it's, I mean, you automatically know who you're talking about, but uh, how did you first hear the news? Well, this all last weekend, uh, I was on a uh, big choir tour uh, with um, my uh, university, and just sitting on a tour bus, scrolling through the phone, and then I saw just one ad of it pop up. And, of course, you know, at first I didn't think much of it because, you know, we, unfortunately you hear these celebrity deaths hosts all the time. But then once I started seeing more confirmations out, out of it from credible news outlets, it's uh, just, wow, I mean, you just can't believe it. I mean, yeah, I never really – I don't really watch NBA at all, at all or, like, I mean, I only really focus on just a couple sports in general, but – Regardless if you follow basketball or not, everyone knows who Kobe Bryant is. Uh, and the reason why they know it is just, you know, not just for his skill, but also just his legacy they left behind. You know, what he's done for the entire Lakers organization, uh, what he's done for Team USA Basketball, and just what he's done for the entire sport in general. Uh, so in any sport, you, I mean, it, it really hurts to lose any athlete, but if you lose uh, the athlete, like such tragically in the case of Kobe Bryant for when you, when you see an athlete who has impacted their respective sports so much, uh, regardless if they're uh, in the game or if they're retired or whatnot, um, you know, it just leaves a big hurt there and not, not just the sports world and that sport, but the entire sports world in general. So um, it's just been amazing to see all of the, uh, different athletes and fans from sports all around the world uh, mourning the death of Kobe. Um, but I think we know what we can really take away from uh, this ex unfortunate experience is, you know, just appreciating uh, life in general. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like, you know, when a lot of times just stuff like this happens, like just for me personally, it makes me think about some of the things that we take for granted. Uh, we shouldn't take our time here on earth for granted. Um, we shouldn't take the people who are, who we're surrounded by for granted. Um, so I know too, like, fortunately, like I saw my parents like right after that too, after a couple of weeks and we just kind of talked about it. And, you know, I just, me personally, I just need to tell them like, you know, how much I love them, how I appreciate them. And so it's just one of those instances where you have something like this happens and uh, you gain a whole new, appreciation uh for the people and the things that you have around you yeah and uh, one of the more tragic things is his 13 year old daughter I mean, oh, who was supposed to continue on kobe's legacy people said um and now that's been tragically cut short and uh to continue on your point about um we take life for granted um on sunday i mean when i i first heard it through uh someone on discord at first i didn't believe it and it was you know you know it was on tmz and i always i'm always iffy on tmz you know and uh it maybe took me about 30 minutes before more news started coming and coming in and i still didn't believe it until i saw it on espn and they were you know still even even today you know as we're recording they're still talking about it so uh it is kind of hard to see to uh imagine but and to your point about life t being life taken for granted, um, on Sunday after we heard the news, uh, my mom told me on how the reason why we call now the present because it's a gift. It's a gift of living. I mean, tomorrow's not promised. You know, you never know. Next week's not promised. You never know. So uh, you always want to live life to the fullest. And I feel like Kobe, in his short 41 years, he did just that. Even though. I mean, when you're able to transcend basketball and as smooth as he did to his second act to not only becoming a father, but becoming just making his own production company, doing all these other things and spending more time with his kids and his wife now and to have it all gone like that, it's um, it's really just a tragedy. So um, with how much Kobe meant to, I mean, just everyone 
in the world that even is remotely involved in sports. So that would be basketball in general. The Core League has decided to pay tribute to Kobe Bryant. Uh, majority, if not all, of the cars you're going to see on track at the Chicago Speedway, instead of them running their traditional paint scheme colors, they have now decided to put that on hold for one race only to run purple and gold colors, the colors that Kobe Bryant made famous uh, when he played for the Lakers for 20 years in his NBA career. Um, and on top of that, Darren Gilliam, who was originally supposed to run the 25 car uh, for one time only, he will race the 24 car. And also, on lap number 24, uh, me, Cody, and the whole broadcast, we're all going to go silent on that lap uh, in honor of Kobe Bryant. Um, so, yeah, now let's try to shift gears and to um, go into a more lighter subject. Last weekend at the Darlington Raceway produced, in my opinion, one of the greatest races uh, this season. An awesome battle, obviously, between Brian Parsonek and Joey Stone. Let's take a look now at the standings. Brian Parsonek leads with 178 points behind him. Is uh, Joey Stone in 19 points behind? David Cornelius, uh, a horrible race for him. Finished, I believe, ninth or tenth on the in the grid after the race. Falls back to third in points, 40 points behind. Fourth is Brent Littell. Fifth is Joseph Lombard. Sixth is Darren Gilliam. Seventh is Michael Coates Jr. 8th is Cody Hicken, Ninth is Trey Norma. Uh, by the way, also Trey Norma, he will be racing tonight in the Core League. Originally, he was supposed to wait until Iowa, but because of the death of Kobe Bryant, he decided to make another race added onto his schedule in honor of him. Right now, the top 10 is Rusty Walrus. 11th is Jake Baskinger. 12th is Michael Maroots. 13th is Diego Alvarado. 14th is Ed Soundhead. 15th is Ray Jacobs. And 166 points behind in the 16th spot is Ryan Labonte. Now, if you, as soon as you, uh, let's say last weekend in Darlington, you saw the finish and you instantly went to bed and it's the first time you're seeing Core, there's a reason why Brian is the points leader and not maybe Joey Stone, or if so, Joey Stone's not closer. This is due to this incident that took place on the last round of pit stops. Brian Patterson and I and Joey Stone to come out together on pit road, but Joey Stone leaves the racetrack and enters onto the racing surface as soon as he leaves pit road in the middle of one and two, while Parsonek waited until off of two. Those two made contact. Brian Parsonek lost a ton of ground that ultimately costed him the race. Well, that is against the rules. It was, it was made a rule a few weeks ago, or if not the start of the season, that you're not allowed to do that. You have to wait until you exit off of turn two, and you have to get on the racing surface on the back straightaway, not in one and two, which is what Joey Stone did. As a result, Joey Stone was offered, I believe, a three or five second penalty, which is now what the Core League is starting to do more and more with little incidents like this and so just taking away points. Uh, that dropped him from first to second. Um, and even though it's a rule, it's black and white, it's clear as days, this caused, for some reason, a lot of controversy. And Cody, I feel like you got something to say about this. What do you, oh, what's on your mind, man? Jet, Jet, Jet. <laughs> I know I was gone last week, but that does not mean that I was not paying attention to anything. <laughs> and unfortunately, it kind of spanned it to the tutor world. It's like, but first, just go back at this incident, incident again. Now, here we go. We have What If and Sloppy Joe side by side. They come off pit road. Yes, you have to stay below that yellow line. Now, Sloppy said and stated that he moved up to give What If room, which, you know, in his heart, like, I don't believe there is any ill will intentions by Sloppy to try to gain advantage. He just, of course, yeah. However, yeah. What I think he should have done is that he should have just fallen back a little bit, just fall, just right, single file in line with what if around the corner, because you can see right here when Sloppy, when he moves up the racetrack, that gives him that incredible run coming off of two past Pasternak, and Pasternak was never able to get back by him, I believe. So basically with him going up there, that basically gave uh, Sloppy the lead while what if was doing what he was supposed to do, stay on the, stay on the inside. So, I mean... Hey, that's the rule. I know Sloppy's intentions were good. He wasn't intending, you know, to try to cheat the system at all. But, you know, hey, rules are rules. And uh, at the end of the day, I mean, yes, obviously, he was rightfully to be upset about it. But he was very accepting about the rules. Who were some people who weren't ex very accepting of the rules yet? Uh oh! <laughs> Expanded to the Twitter world. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I can't believe all the people that were upset about it. And I mean, yeah. of course, you're most most likely the ones who were upset about it were Sock Joe fans, just because you know he's putting on this credible run, trying to get up to the point system. But and they he broke the rule, and like you got people like look at this, look look at this guy. I would say Toledo says, that's bleeping bleep. He was, 
y'all at the core league need to lay off the bleeping bleep on the side if you want to we'll just say drug right there that <laughs> sloppy joe won that dang race no wonder people stop root racing screw this league <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay not just and it wasn't just Celte. he was just he was just one of the more vocal people about it there was plenty yes. of people who were on the same way i don't know how y'all grew up out there but i was growing up with the fact where rules are there for a reason if you break rule there is consequences sloppy joe broke rule Therefore, Sloppy Joe gets consequences. Now, I think it could have been a whole lot worse. You know, it's not like, you know, he would have had to make a pass through a penalty or that he lost a lap or he got black flagged or anything. So all he got was just that time penalty and moved him back to second. So, I mean, yes, I know some people are upset about it, but at the end of the day, it was there, black and white, stay on the bottom of the racetrack until exit of two. Sloppy Joe did not do that. And in fact, he gained a position on what if. So all the core haters out there. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's our fault for upholding those. Not our fault as in Brock. We don't enforce rules, but yeah, I don't think I don't, I don't think it is uh, admin's fault or the like the core league uh, owners uh, who are at fault for just keeping the rules in line. So uh, for that's that is my rant for this week. Uh, congratulations, all you core haters and people who don't understand what rules are. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was. I was very surprised when uh, a lot of there was a lot of anger from this because it's it was clear oh, as I days. Know. I mean, th th there was even a yellow line there. Yes. On, at Darnes. it's not like some racetracks when there's no line where you don't know what is really the apron. What there was a yellow line and he clearly went above it and went right to the racetrack. I mean, he had the opportunity to maybe back off or if yeah, he got exactly. out. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what he should have done. But, you know, he went up there and he, like I said, I mean, yes, he had good intentions, but, you know, those good intentions kind of worked in his favor, though. So, yeah, they, he's penalized. What if it's your race winner? Flappy Joe's second. And, by the way, I, I don't I don't think we gained any haters from this. I think they were always there. So, and by the and I mean, I know people don't watch, but I guarantee people are going to watch anyway just because this is an amazing week. So. Okay, well, last weekend at Darlington concluded uh, and began the second half final stretch towards the Core League Championship. And Workman, you have a now updated list in your Power 5 with one of the big three barely even on your list. Oh, I know. We'll, we'll get to them in a little bit, but just as, we, as per usual, we always go from top to bottom. So, number one, I uh, guess he did get that penalty last week, but still he ended up with a second place. Sloppy Joe is still number one. Uh, he's kind of stalemated as far as the points go, kind of like around that, like, 19, like, upper teens to lower 20 points back. So, I don't know if he has enough time to still get that first place. I mean, I think if things go this way, he can still up, get up there into the points lead. He shouldn't be worried just yet, but we're running out of races here. Uh, number two is what if, a uh, great job by him picking up that second win, and it wasn't just a fluke. He was also up there last week uh, leading laps and uh, doing a great job as well. Uh, but he is still number two. Number three, biggest mover of the week is Joseph Lombard, number three. Uh, I believe this ties him for his highest placement so far in my Power Five. Uh, he has turned it on a lot lately. He got second in the in Indianapolis after rebounding from a bunch of spins. Um, and additionally, he got, I believe, which was another uh, top five finish last week in Darlington as well. And he was also up there uh, with Sloppy and would have had times during the race as well. Uh, number four is Brendan Littell. Uh, he wasn't the best race for him at Darlington last week, but still I'm thinking about this amazing run that he's been having the past few uh, races, uh, just knocking out consistent top fives and also at times showing a race-winning car. Uh, you got to acknowledge that. And then number five is drive through. Wow. Uh <laughs> It's been nothing has gone drive throughs way except for, I believe, a top five at Watkins Glen a couple weeks ago. It has just been terrible for drive through. Uh, they didn't even finish last week's race. He finished in ninth place at Indianapolis, had all those issues there, and then a bunch of other races in general where he was just finishing in the second half of the pack. So 
Um, I think if Drive Through has one more bad race, he lit he lit Drive Through. He literally needs to be top three the rest of the races of the season if he wants to have a shot at this championship. Uh, just because of one of how his performance has been the last couple of weeks and with, you know, sloppy and what if just consistently in the top two, top three, every single race we go to. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would almost maybe eliminate him from championship contention at this point, just based off of what I've seen, uh, unless he does a full 180. Wow. Yes. Almost uh, added, eliminated championship contention I, already? I, well, just based off of what I've seen, I mean, think about it. Sloppy Joe was 40, 45 points back at the beginning of this season. That's just been, what, 11, 12 races in the season? And he's only brought it back to 19 points. That's true. We got yeah. six We got six races left. And drive through is 40 back. And from what I've seen, those top two are oh, in points. They've been top three practically every single race. And, I mean, you got to think about it, too. Theoretically, if drive through were to win every single race, he would still need Sloppy Joe and What If to have one or two races of just doing terribly. Yeah. Um, and then there's a couple of guys I'm going to mention too, even though they're not in the top, in the Power Five. Uh, just some tip of the hats, I want to say. Uh, the first one is my boy Michael Mertz. Uh, he hasn't made that many races this season, but the past couple of races he's has he has made and. When he has been showing up in these races, he's been doing pretty well. He has a 5.9 average finish, which is, I believe, the fourth or fifth place, uh, the fourth or fifth best average finish uh, out of everybody in this league. So I just want to check my stats here just to make sure, because I was looking at something completely different. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, slop, Sloppy, what if, and one back there on front of him uh, on the average finish, but yeah. Michael Mruz, he has the fourth best average finish uh, in this entire league. Granted, he hasn't ran, he's only ran about like half of the races compared to everyone else. He's only competed in five races. But still, I think, you know, if we look at him, especially because this is a place that he won at uh, last year at Chicago Land, he could do well here. And like a lot of the intermediate tracks and like some other places we've gone to in, in general, uh, he hasn't been that bad at, at. So tip of the hat to him. And then also, I want to give a tip of the hat to Rusty Walrus. Uh, Darlington is a hard, hard, hard racetrack to drive. Uh, it is one of the biggest driver's racetracks out there. And for him to get a top five like he did last week, uh, I think that was an amazing job by him to do that. And then also, that's just kind of building up on a couple of decent runs that he's had the past couple of weeks. That's, this is coming off of uh, a front row starting spot. I think Indianapolis didn't have the finish there that he wanted, but he saw a great speed there. And also coming off that top three at Bristol. Uh, and then when I look at the next the next two tracks that we're going to, Chicago Land being the night and Talladega next week. These are oh, two yes. tracks these are two tracks that I think that uh, he could do that he could try to pull off something. So watch for those two these next few weeks, Michael Mertz and Rusty Wallace. Absolutely. Well, regardless, it's going to be a very fun race to watch. Last year, we had a closing battle for the finish line, as you mentioned, with Michael Maruz and Michael Costa Jr. Uh, but that was in Heat 3. Heat 4 could be different way, different feeling of uh, how the car drives around the Windy City. And at your hometown track of the Chicago Land Speedway, you took the Core League on track car for another edition of War Friends World from the Chicago Land Speedway. Ready. Welcome to Chicago Land Speedway, everybody. As I have said already, this is my home track. A lot of fond memories here at this place. Right. Actually, I can remember we're going to take a little trip down memory oh, lane okay. here. All right. Uh, one of my favorite races here ever was a 2011 wow. race, and I believe it was about that stand right there <laughs> where I was sitting at. Aww. And actually, I had made this cute little sign that said, Go Dale Jr., it was so fun and a uh, great race by him. We're like, oh, guys, get out of here. I'm reliving a sentimental moment here. Leave. Go. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I was sitting right up there. It had a nice little sign named Go Dale Jr. on it. And, uh, there's a, yeah, there's a nice little picture right there of me telling Jr., hey, get on the gas, get on the throttle, get up there and win this race. And, he actually did pretty good. I think he got third place there in that race. So, anyway, continue. 
fun little fact actually there's a nice little tunnel that goes right underneath the track right there and there's your secret lesson about Chicago land for today. So I think this track gets really underrated for one this back straightaway it has this nice long curve to it it's not really straight it's kind of going left this entire way around so but still you want to ride right against that wall so here we go we're going to come off turn number four a lot of guys will dive diamond down to this apron right here get a good launch so you want to get your turn one entry right here you want to stay up a little bit there's a bump right there gonna get quite down to the bottom right there but this turn one and two pretty tricky then you're gonna come out to this outside wall here and on back stretch into turn number three a little bit more easy and forgiving than turns one and two Turns one and two you can actually try to make some passes on the outside or even hold off guys on that outside as well coming down to this apron right here Gonna cut off turn number one, and although we may not see guys from the high line here, we still may see guys slide job like right here. The infamous slide job call by Dale Jr. And in that same race, we saw that same lap actually. Kyle Bliss giving the bumper to Larson, moved him up the track, and Kyle Bliss went on the winless race. So, kind of upset I didn't go to that race, unfortunately, but still, the past couple of years. And NASCAR has shown to be some pretty fun racing. And I think we're going to see the same thing here tonight. Home track, Chicagoland, in the daylight, here today. It's going to be fun. One. All right. Well, let's take a look now at the race analysis for tonight's race here at the Chicago Speedway with the John Deary 250, I think, or 200. I forgot what it was. Um, it's a 200. All right. <laughs> 39 laps in stage one, stage two, 56 laps in stage three with the uh, fuel window being 50 to 52 laps. Cody, what do you think is going to happen in tonight's race? Uh, it's going to be a mix of these amount of things for sure. I think when we just look at the combination of the stage links and the pit window. Uh, it's We may see a variety of strategy in these first two stages just because of the fact that, that these stages are just a few laps longer than the pit window. So we could see guys come down and pit just after a few laps into the race. They may split the stages halfway or they may pit at the end and maybe take two tires, no tires, uh, four tires. Uh, and then in stage three, uh, there's only about a five lap window for everybody to try to just split the stage in half. But of course, that's assuming we go green all the way. Uh, and I think it may be a scenario if we get one caution late, it may be a caution re caution the scenario because uh, this is a fast, tight race track. Uh, just for me, my, my home track, uh, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, obviously, I guess like you could say I'm biased in saying that I enjoy this track. Um, but also, like, it, I, it is kind of more one lane. However, if you get the right guy on the outside and one and two, uh, who knows how to make passes on the outside, it is somewhat possible. And if not somewhat possible to try to hold a guy off on the outside in terms one and two, uh, to try to make a pass on the inside. So. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an entertaining race. It's going to be fun. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be uh, fun to watch. Yeah, and I forgot to mention, I uh, made an error. The graphic already corrected that. But I meant to say pit, uh, pit win, I believe, was 30 to 32 laps um, and not 50 to 52 laps. So sorry for that little issue there. So they were, are going to have to pit um, in Stage 1 and maybe in Stage 2. So uh, now let's move on to picks to win. Uh, Cody, I, I forgot who you picked. They think you picked Brian last week in uh, Darlington, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, who do you have? Do you think you can go two in a row? Uh, I think it's very possible, but uh, you know what, Jet? I may go I swear, out guys, if you pick, one. If you pick Brian or Joey, no, I swear. I am not going to pick one of those two. You know what? Oh. With this being my home track, uh, I believe some miracles can happen here. Uh, and if this guy were to win, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a miracle because he has shown speed and he won here last year. I believe Michael Mrutz will come back when wow. the second career core league race at the same track that he won last year has shown great speed, especially at these mile and a half tracks this season when he has been able to show up and yeah, watch from Roots and wow. The gas I can't water race. nation. <laughs> you get the win tonight. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised he threw out Michael Marus there. Right, he might, he, 
might have if he does race tonight i'm pretty sure he might have yeah oh yes well. he's racing he's racing tonight oh, he's I, racing? I know right. i know he's t unless something changes he's told me he's racing and listen third place at darlington uh had a chance to win there at homestead also earlier in this year at the other mile and a half that we've done so he's done great at these mile and a halfs All and right. he won here last week so or last okay. year well this originally i was gonna go with joseph lombard uh because i felt like again he just if he can just have a clean race, he he had the opportunity at Darlington, but he spun himself out. So, um, this driver, he, he, okay, how can I say this? He hasn't been on the best of, 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 a past few races. He hasn't been the best. Um, things haven't gone his way. He's been, he's been wrecking. He's just been off. Well, I think that's going to end today. Remember, race three of the season at a mile and a half track at Homestead, this driver, no one had him on his radar, and he somehow managed to find his way into victory lane. I got the Canadian drive through. He's going to come back. He's going to end the battle log, and he is going to win at Chicago Land, and he's going to put himself back in the championship hunt. So, uh, and also, he's my boss. So I might as well give him some uh, <laughs> encouragement. <laughs> Wow, when you oh, yeah. put it, when you put it that way, it's like, did you even make a pick? Or... No, 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 no. Even even if he wasn't my boss, I still would have picked him. Yeah. But you know, he's good. Yeah, I, he's yeah. good. He, he just needs everything to go his way. Um, well, that's gonna conclude this episode of the Court on MDK Period Show. It's gonna be a very very fun race to watch. So, for Cody Workman, my name is Jack Kraut. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the John Deere 200 from the Chicago Land Speedway. Alrighty, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the broadcast for race I think 11 or 12 of the Core League here on MDKs. We're going to be racing from the Chicago Land Speedway oh for the John Deary 200. Uh, and with everything that happened with Kobe Bryant and now as of uh, early this afternoon, we just got word that um, unfortunately John Andretti, who was the son of Michael Andretti, passed away after a long battle with colon cancer at the age of... Of 56 so now it's also going to be a tribute to not only kobe bryant but also to um john andretti so um right now i'm just going to be pulling up workman here in a bit making sure you can get his lovely face in here all righty and yes i'm here and can the people see me they can in three two one hey. boom there we go <laughs> Hey, what's up, people? All right, so, yeah, um, we don't have an entry <laughs> list. Um, I was just never given one. I don't know why. We're um, just, we're, we're, we're going to find out who's going to be there. Like, it, it's a, it's a mystery, it's a mystery box race. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it, it is a mystery box. Um, okay, let's, <laughs> let's, let's think about it. We got, who's racing? Maroots is racing. Um, still don't know. If, oh yeah, Raw Gator. He's also racing. We talked about uh, that. He's also well, well, well. I saw earlier. I saw earlier in our chat that we have like thirteen, maybe fourteen guys racing tonight. So it is going to be a uh, pretty big field. Yeah, and Chicagoland of all places. I didn't really expect Chicagoland to be the track that has all the drivers, or at least has a lot of the drivers. Well, it's pretty racy. I mean, when you have a such a iconic. Uh, sponsor. Well, first off, it, I mean, of course, John Deary is supposed to stand for John Deere. But when you have anything somewhat close to such a phenomenal brand in agriculture, of course, it's going to be a fun race. Yeah, I guess. Um, all righty. Just making <laughs> <laughs> bring a bit more adjustments here to make sure. Shameless you get plug, a... by the way, the Workman Family Farms trust John Deere with all their money. <laughs> I don't think they're. Don't, you're not getting a sponsor, man. <laughs> right. Stop trying. No, I All mean, right. I, it, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> okay. I, don't um, I mean, hey, I understand. We do trust them. Okay, so uh, Danny B. He's also going to be racing tonight, I believe. Uh, let's see who else. Who else? Who else? Um, Joseph is racing. Jake is racing. Darian's racing. Brendan, uh, Sloppy Joe. I think Winval is also. Oh yeah, Rusty Walrus. He's also racing. Drive Through is racing, and I think also Winval. So. Yeah. Um, currently, we have uh, we're just waiting for uh, qualifying to. I think it has already started, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it has started. And Jesus, nine laps. And guess who's running? Take a guess. 
Who's running? Who's making a return to the core league? I, I can't exactly hear you because they're kind of cutting out on me oh. from time to time. All right. Uh, Take a guess. Who's returning to core for this race? Is it uh, Mr. Carnation? No, nope, he's trash. I'm talking about someone no. good. <laughs> oh, you're talking about someone good. Yes. Well, you said. Well, you just said Winval. Yeah, no, yeah, but it's a driver you haven't seen in a while. Think about it. Oh boy. Uh, if it's someone from season one, then I wouldn't be entirely sure because I wasn't on staff here last season. No, he, he raced in season know. two. Yeah. He's raced in season oh, two. Oh, 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 wait. Oh no. Do are you serious? Do we have Mister uh, Blue Deuce himself? Yep. Finally, return. finally, for the first time since I think Homestead was the last time he raced, yes. Ed Soundhead no. is back. I can't hear you. Um, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, Ed Soundhead is back. There we go. Yep, there oh. we go. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Ed Soundhead is back, so that is good. Um, all right. And they have, f there's still six or seven laps to go in this. So I'm thinking about we should do uh, bring back another edition of hashtag Ask Core Booth. You know what the drill is. Use a hashtag Ask Core Booth for any questions, and uh, we will be ready to answer them. So, yeah, just and to... I will let and I will let you read them off to me, my friend, because I'm looking at uh, pulling up some streams and stuff. So yeah, 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 yeah. You 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 work on that. You you do your thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh man. All right. So let me just put up. Okay, um, okay, Jennifer, uh, where do you watch qualifying? Uh, you just watch it on other people's streams. Uh, I think there is, let me take a look here, we've got one, two, three, four, four people streaming only. I think there's a few more over on Twitch, but I'm not sure, but yeah, that's where we take a look at qualifying. <laughs> Eric, um, Cody, since you're the driver, you can answer this. This is from what? Dual Shock. Why okay. is Carnation trash? Um. Okay. Well, let's just say if we're if we're gonna talk about why Carnation's why Carnation's has uh. Well, first of all, I don't know. I don't even know how old how old is the kid. Twelve. Thirteen. <laughs> I think he's. Th I don't 14, know. Some some some. Oh, four. I don't. Oh, know. I was dead wrong. I, I was know. dead wrong. Uh. I don't know. I I would like to see him back though. Like he. He brings he brings out all the memes in us, you know. He, he so I th he he needs to like come back. Like what isn't he like isn't he like a big contributor to like that freaking like stone he stone head thing or whatever? Yeah. I haven't kept on to that at all, by the way. Like I have no idea what the point is behind that whole stone head thing You're at not all. The only one. All I know oh, is yeah. that he's the one that got started it, and he yeah. was able to bring Myatt Snyder into the whole mix as well. Yeah, I don't get it as well, but whatever. Uh, he, I, I, if he's gonna return any time this season, he might return Talladega. Which, by the way, folks, if everything goes good with Talladega, it is gonna be a stream to remember. It, I'm gonna be extra busy uh, behind the scenes with Talladega. Oh, we got, everything we got out. some. We got some fun stuff planned for Talladega. We got some fun I'm stuff. Basically, wise. let's just say this: if you if you have not seen a quarterly race this entire season. Or your friends haven't. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Tell your cousins. Your aunts. Your uncles. Your pet goldfish. Pet bring goldfish. them to the stream. Point them at the screen. Like, hey, we gotta watch this brand new broadcast that we're bringing to you guys next weekend or next week. It's gonna be one to remember. One that's fun to watch too. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. Let's just. Uh, we're not gonna throw out much, but all I'm gonna say is this: the thing that you see on the top of the screen and on the bottom of the screen. Is gonna look nicer. That's it. That's all we got. Um, we had a couple more say ask some questions here. Um, <laughs> Cito Brown. Uh, he says, "Will Joey soon have a clean race one day after his birthday?" So basically, do you, do you think he's gonna do well? I'm guessing. I don't know if that's the uh, revolves around. Uh, to my question, I will say, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> part of it is because. Uh, I think, well, first off, you know, we've kind of seen, I've noticed a bit of a pattern here when it comes to Joey Snow. 
Like, of course, you know, if he's out front and no one's, like, immediately on him to give him pressure, he's able to drive away. Yeah. If he is racing next to people or if he's, like, just, like, he's, like, in second, third or whatever, he is really aggressive. And we've seen that kind of bite him in the butt a couple times. I mean, uh, we saw how aggressive he was at Homestead and how rough he was kind of roughing up guys there. I know Indianapolis – Lap one through the short shoot, he took it three wide. A lot of people were happy with him when he did that. And also, when he got way too aggressive coming off pit road there at Darlington, uh, he gave himself a penalty. So I think if – I have a feeling if Sloppy Joe does not win this race tonight, it will be a product of him beating himself more than anything. All right. Uh, well, qualifying just wrapped up, ladies and gentlemen. We, there was a few more there we could have gotten to, but apologies there. Um, 15 cars I saw <laughs> qualifying. Oh my goodness. Okay, so, uh, okay, let's, uh, take a look at, uh, Brian's stream. All right, so, Brian wins pull. Second place is not on the list. I'm guessing Joey Stone. Third is Trey Normal. Fourth is Winval. Uh, fifth is Davin Cornelius. Sixth is Joseph Lombard. Seventh, not on here. Uh, twelfth, Ed Soundhead. Wow, twelfth place. I mean, he has been off the game for a while, so it makes sense. Fourteenth uh, is Jake Bassinger. I'm trying to see where I'm trying to see where Mrutz is starting, and his dang shoulders in the way. <laughs> Mrutz, oh, he's an eleventh. Ouch. An eleventh. Ooh. Mrutz, Mrutz, you're not making me look smart. <laughs> oh man. Come on, buddy. I know I, you got it in ya. Yeah. Tenth is uh, Cody Age Gaming. Eighth is Brennan Latell. I mean, Michael Mrutz, last year's winner. 11th on the grid. Pretty shocking. Hey, you know what? But, hey, qualifying, it may not mean everything, especially because how Charlotte, or no, no, not Charlotte, but Chicagoland is, like, you know, this is, like, you're not on, you're not off the gas much here. Yeah. So, I mean, it could have been just, like, draft laps and whatnot. So, we'll see what everyone has come race time. Okay. Um, here's the, f okay, let's see. Uh, any other, Diego's racing. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Oh, yeah, and Winville is racing. Okay, good. Okay, so, I think we're good to jump in. We are good to go. Get the load in screen. Cut to the gameplay. I know it's black for a bit. Guys, I understand that. Just wait for a little bit. All righty, load it in. And reactivate. All right. It's black screen for a bit. Wait for it. All right, there we go. All righty. Ready, Cody? Yeah, Cody, you can turn off your uh, base cam. <laughs> All right, here we go. It is the John Deere yeah, 200 for Kobe Bryant and John yep. Andretti. On the inside is What If Racing. On the outside is Joey Stone. Green flags in the green air. Flag. Off turn four to lead. The first lap will be the number one car of Brian Passman to his outside is, I believe, as the 85 car, Trey Normal. As you see, a lot of these colors are repping in purple, gold, and white in some way, shape, or form to commemorate the life of Kobe Bryant as well as, well as to honor John Andretti, the John Andretti who drove the 49 car in the late 90s, driven by Diego Alvarado. Look at this three wide battle in the middle of the pack. On the outside is Michael Cosi Jr. Bit close right there. Everything goes by, gets through, but Coasty Jr. lost a ton of ground on that run. Meanwhile, up front, Brian Parrish, next to race leader, second place is Trey Mount, third is Lombard, fourth is Devin Cornelius, and in fifth place is that 43 car of Diego Alvarado.
This is the largest field, I believe, since Daytona here in the Core League. And there is, a, as you can tell, more cars means more carnage. Take a look in the middle of the pack. David Cornelius under pressure from Joseph Lamar on the outside lane. In third place there, Joseph cuts down low underneath. Cornelius down the back straightaway and entering three. See that 85 car of Trey Normile. Uh, he looked to that outside of Brian Pasternak right there for a little bit. Uh, I don't know if he's too content about this riding there in second. He wants to get some laps led. Remember, he hasn't he hasn't made the past couple of races, and uh, I think he's missing this lead as he's looking underneath Pasternak. Here he comes, Normal. He's got to run underneath the inside. Can he get to his left rear corner paddle? No, it does not. He's gonna probably shoot back up to the outside lane, right behind Pasternak entering three. All right, so with all these cars, yeah, Brian. Oh, sorry. I want to say with all these cars, Brian, where would be the preferred lane right now to go? You want to be on the inside lane or want to be on the outside? I think that's on the inside, just because if you because if you're on an outside lane, you'll just get shuffled back. But I mean, this thing I want to point out, just for that little bit when uh, Pasternak and uh, Gator were just side by side for just about half a lap. Look how that brought in the 82 car of Lombard. So this is one of these tracks where. If uh, you're trying to go for a pass on someone, you better do it quick because you're going to lose touch with that guy in front of you or that guy behind you is going to start closing them up. Yes, it looks like about a three-car breakaway for a bit there. Fourth place is the eight-car Joey Stone. Surprisingly, Joey Stone, he's not been able to, he's, to stay up in the lead pack. And look at that, second place, the 82-car Lombard on the inside of Normal for second. And he, look, look what he's going to bring, the eight-car Joey Stone trying Joey's to make a three-wide maybe. Joey's got yeah, Joey had a good run there. I was wondering if he was going to take it three wide, just knowing if he was going to be aggressive at all. Gator chopped off Lombard's nose a little bit. Yeah, right, right now. now, I think definitely because of who's leading this race right now, uh, Joey Stone, he wants to get up there and get this lead. Yeah, it looks like... Right. Oh, someone's in the grass spinning. Uh, who is that, I believe? Take a look here. Oh, that's a 59 car, Rusty Walrus. Oh, and Baskin you know, just ran into the side of him. No caution, they, they keep get it going. going again, but uh, Baskinier and Walrus. And look at for the lead. The for the lead. Underneath the 85 car normal to the outside is Pasternak. And also battle for third as Stone gets by Lombard off four. Uh, so you're like Stone, he's going to get the run here. What's he going to do? He's just going to fall in line right behind... Uh, Gator right there. There's from the freight train. And oh, here comes Lombard. Three wide on the inside. Trying to make it there. Nothing there. Slides up top behind Pasternak. And on the inside, the 8 and the 85 car go to first and second with Normal taking the lead. But he's got a hungry pack of wolves behind him for third and fourth place. The one car of Pasternak and the 82 car of Lombard. And here comes Stone to the inside. Oh, he looked like he forced his way down there. He's pushing who's what car is he gonna go with? Side by side down Don't the back straight. Side with Gator a bit. Stone with the advantage. Still side by side just a bit there. Off of four. Stone, he's gonna clear him. Yes, he does. And back to the front of the pack is the A car of Joey Stone. So it looks like we got a first or second gap, or two car gap between first and second place. But look at from third on back. Look at this, third place Pasternak, fourth is Maroos, last year's winner, fifth is uh, drive through, sixth is a 43 car of Alvarado. Looks like seventh, seventh place there is the 24 car, yes, 24 car of Darren Gilliam. And Lombard has fallen back from third to eighth or ninth place right now. Wow. Here comes Lombard underneath the 24 car of Darren. That's for 7th or 8th place, I believe. Meanwhile, up front, we 
can get a look over there. A car is leading, but the one car Pasternak is now trying to march his way back towards the front of the pack. He now gets a run underneath the 85 car normal. Gonna get a nice run through the front straight entering one, and Pasternak is gonna clear him. So Pasternak now jumps back to the second place spot. And for those of you who are wondering where is the uh, moment of silence, uh, we decided that we're going to pay tribute to Kobe Bryant on lap number 24, and we'll also pay tribute to John Andretti on lap 43, as he was most remembered for driving the 43 car in the late 90s and early 2000s. So just a little update on there for those who are wondering. And currently right now, for those of you who don't hear the uh, Cody Workman, uh, he's currently fixing up his audio issues. He will be here as soon oh, as possible. Go. And as I say that, there he is. Yeah. I, was to like, oh, my, my I have to make the switch to good now. So I was about ready to say, too, uh, two guys that are starting to make their way up through the pack right now is uh, Roots right there in the 48 car. He started at 11th. He's all the way up to 4th. And then right on his bumper, Daniel Alvarez. Oh, he just got around, uh, I believe it was the 82 of Lombard. And they're both, both of them, they're starting to make their way up towards that top three. You're cutting, you're cutting out still a bit there, uh, Cody, but it, it's fine for now. All right, so he got a three-car breakaway now for real. It's the 48 car Maroons. He's not been able to catch up to this lead pack. It's been Pasternak, Stone, and Normal so far that has led the way in this race. How about it for Normile? Like, for as many races that he's missed as of late, you know, he was originally going to run full-time beginning of the year, and now he's kind of transitioned to more part-time. But for him to be missing these races and then coming back right into it and battling for this lead, that says something. Yeah, yeah as you say there. But um, from one driver that took time off, he came back, to another driver that took time off and is not running where he wants, wants to be. Let's go back to the back of the pack that we can find. Danny B., who is now on pit road with the 38 car Jake Baskinger? Yeah, I said earlier that just you know a couple just a couple laps into the stage, you know that's when guys would be able to uh, have, have the window open to make these pit stops. So there's going to be a wide range, wide variety of stops, and I think Ed Soundhead and Cody Yates are coming down pit road as well. Oh, and he spins it. Oh. Ed Town, he gets it going again, not too terrible, but he just got loose up the grip, hit the inside wall a bit, lost about two or three seconds. It looks like that's going to be a problem the entire season. It's been pit road issues. That's going to be the number one thing uh, that's probably going to plague uh, these cars. They're trying to get on pit road, not spinning out. Remember, the pit window is 30 to 32 laps, so as you see, the 21 car of Danny Beat leave pit road. He's going to go one lap down. Okay. Right there is drive through. Yeah, the 77 car. He's been running pretty well so far in the fifth place. Not too and bad. Now but... that he's... There's a thing, too, that I think we need to watch out for. If you're going to see guys take two tires, it's going to be one of you. It's going to be one of these guys here that pit earlier. Because if you take two tires, it's better to take them earlier in the run than later in the run. Because it's just that offset between. If you're going to two tires, you want to have at least those left sides to have as much grip in them and uh, as least amount of wear in them as possible. Otherwise, if you just wait until the end of the run to take two tires, that car is going to uh, handle terribly. You're right now the one car passing. It looks like he's settling in for second place. It's not like he's trying to force to take the lead. Could we see maybe an undercut performed by Brian this early or for maybe Trey Norman on the 85? Uh, I'm not sure because I don't like, know how like effective the draft is right now. But uh, I mean, I would say that if Normal, if he starts to lose touch with these leaders, then that's when I would come down to pit. Actually, you see how far off he is right now. Yeah. I would actually think about coming down the pit. And look but if you got those two up there battling for the lead, that's yeah. going to draw him in closer to him. Yeah, the one car passer, Nick. I thought he was probably settling in for second place, but no, he's going for the lead side by side to the start finish line. Joey Stone will lead this lap. Another, next two more. We have. Oh, spin! Who's that? 
Lombard Lombard tried to get on pit road again, and oh. he spun the car around. And two other guys that hit pit road is Michael Cassie Jr. and the 43 of Diego Alvarado. All right. Well, uh, we talked about earlier on in the pre-race show on lap 24. We're gonna commemorate the life of Kobe Bryant, and we are just about to hit that lap. So for now, all of us on Corn MDK, we're gonna go silent here on lap 24. TV, even though when I checked into my phone. All right, so for the lead right now, it still belongs to the eight car of Joey Stone, the one car Brian Pasternak. Now it's going to get a run underneath him. Now it's a bit more of an advantage. And, and the guy that did pit, though, meanwhile, these cars are two side by side. Normal did come and you see what Joey's doing. We talked about it earlier that I got that knows how to run that outside. He can try to hold off that. that oh, pass him. he hits the apron a bit. Got part of that too is because Joey he got he was really aggressive getting on that third corner panel of Pastor Deck. That's able to pull him back in these corners, but it also upset his back end a little bit. Well that's one way of passing a driver. Wow. Alright, well, so now the one car pass is in the race lead. Could the eight car of Joey Stone might try and uh, get him back a bit? Or do you think he's gonna try and maybe wait for pit stops? Because apparently it must be coming soon if everyone except these three these two drivers to come on pit road. Come decides to come down pit road first. That basically gave him that other guy opportunity to lead more laps. So you're going to see these two guys to the end as far as possible. They do not. Help. Yeah, I mean, currently it, I mean, we talk about it all season. It's been Brian Patterson and I can Joey Stone just dominating this season so far. Um, let's take a look maybe at some other battles if we can find them. Oh, here's a little position here. The 82, the 24, and I think that is the 28 car, if I'm not mistaken. No, the 38 car, I should say. That is for 10th, 11th, and 12th place right there. But one guy is hitting pit road as well, Michael Mertz. He's making his stop. He got on the pit road. It looks like pretty clean. All right. Now, uh, yeah, he's... Oh, whoa. Something happened, I think, with the one in the 20... Or the eight car. They were on the apron when we cut back to them. Maybe they're signaling that they're both coming down the pit here. And they are. Up, up, Pat. Yeah, they're both coming. Oh, oh it's Oh, and the one oh, car spins! On the back bumper of Pasternak. Puts him in the wall. Oh, man. Was that a bit of payback? Well, I don't I don't know. Like, dude, Joey just ran over Pasternak getting on the pit road. But yeah, if you want to take a look at... Inside. If you want to take a look at uh, Joey Stone's stream, I mean, he is in disappointment with what he just did. I mean, he has his hand on his head. So, obviously, he did not mean to do that. But, wow. And, oh, Brian just runs up the back of him. Ah, uh, it's computer. <laughs> <laughs> you can't control it. All right, so now, obviously, the A car, he's going to get out on pit road first. Or at least ahead of Pasternak. It's going to be interesting to see uh, what oh, happens there. Pasternak had a decent battle, so even though, and look at this, too, because they stayed out for a while. Look at we got a new battle for the lead here. Drive through, and it looks like... Um, the 21 car, that's Danny? Danny, I'm not sure. Yeah, he, 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 if the 21's in the lead, he may have not made his pit stop yet. And right now, this is for third place, right now. The double zero car and the 77 car, this is for third. There may be two more people that haven't pitted yet. Yeah, we're, we're trying to find out and see who are the other drivers that have not pitted yet. Or if, you know, depending. Yeah. 
I think Danny B, he, have, he may have not made his pit stop yet. Sounds like he's going to try and maybe stretch it out. Uh, he would have to stretch it out by about seven laps. And, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not a risk. It's not, it's not attainable, I don't think. Yeah. Let's look at the 21 car of Danny B, making his first start in the Coral League this season. Now, oh, the 28 car, Cody Aiken, way below the apron. He's going to come back up. I'm not sure if he got loose or not, but it was very odd to see Actually, him down. Actually, something I want to look at is that possibly Gator may be sitting in either first or second because Ooh, he's, sitting about, he's sitting about half of a corner in front of the rest of the pack. So I wonder if he took two tires. Possibly, maybe. I mean, we didn't have a camera on him, so we didn't know what he wanted to do, but it is a possibility. Oh, look here, see if Slappy Joe, if he has his leaderboard pulled up. Well, look at this battle right here. Three car battle. The 77, the 8, and the double zero car. As drive through now falls to fifth place, Stone up to third. Oh, looks like Kasi, he pushed up the racetrack a little bit. Drive through had the lift. And that's just, kept it all together. And that's going to allow the A car to just drive away. Second place right now, I should say, is Diego. And I'm not sure if Diego pitted. I think he did. Oh, he's he's pitted already. Oh, okay. So wow. I think so I think so I think what our running order is right now, you have uh Rod Gator sitting first, Diego Alvarado sitting second, and they may have taken two tires because they have quite a lead if they would have just taken four tires here. So I believe they're on a two tire strategy for this stage. And I mean they're one of the first few one of the first cars to come down and hit pit road, so they definitely had that option to come down and take two tires and had they stayed out later. And I think that's what uh, Joey and uh Pasternak did. Also Pretty good so far now for Diego. I mean, he hasn't been, he's been there. Uh, Indianapolis, one or two weeks ago, he had a very strong chance at winning. Last weekend at Darlington was just not his night. He was one of, if not the only driver to spin out the most amount of times. Had an issue on pit road that caused him to miss his pit stall. I know sitting nicely in second place. Yeah, I'll tell you, even though those guys took two tires with uh, not only this. Uh, sloppy have four tires. He also has the freshest rubber period just because he pitted a few laps later than those guys. And also, Pasternak is nowhere in sight as when he had that. Uh, and actually, he may have made an on track mistake because he didn't come out that far behind Sloppy, and he's a full straightaway behind him. And he's losing spots. He just lost the eighth place spot to Joseph Lombard. Is about to lose the ninth place spot, and he will. Oh, to Diego's Darius. coming down pit road. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, well, look, I oh, thought you Diego know what? Did, 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 I, I, I thought he did too. And tell you what, did, do you, do you think he maybe used his left sides up too much? Do you think maybe his left sides may not be able to make it to the end of the stage? I mean, I don't know. I mean, that quickly? You think? I don't. Well, I mean, I'm not sure entirely if those left sides could even make it this entire stage. Hmm. All right. Well, Diego, he's gonna forfeit his second place spot in order to come and get his services on pit road. Meanwhile, look at this battle right here. Vermroots, Lombard, Littell, Darian, and Pasternak all bunched up in one little blank right here. I saw the 82 car clip the eight of the grass just a bit entering one to try and take the position away from the 48 car Maroots. Yeah, five cars under a blanket right here. And I mean, yeah, we're coming down to the end of the stage, but the, you know, higher up you finish in, st in the stage, you know, obviously you'll be able to restart. Uh, higher up in stage two so yeah so, just because we're coming to the end of a stage here you know these guys are really going to be racing it on yeah so the eight car of raw gator or the 85 car save raw gator he's going to win stage one second place is jo of uh, joey stone third is drive through fourth is winval and fifth is michael maroots so i mean the one car pasternak man ninth place he's gonna finish 
Yeah, he, he had to have made an on-track mistake. Or I'm wondering, too, if he just tried to take two tires there also. Just because he felt like a rock after he came off of pit road. But uh, hopefully he can regroup here, and we'll see if he can make his way up to the field. Yeah, so we're going to get set for our first restart of the... Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, um, we don't usually do this, but huge shout-out to Smoke Carbon. A $100 donation to the Core League. No way. You, you guys, Smoke Carbon. He said, you said you guys are doing an amazing job in the booth. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Smoke, for saying that. If you think this is good, just wait until Talladega. It is going to be awesome. Oh, boy. yeah. Uh, Smoke Carbon has officially given us the rest of the money needed to bring an amazing show to Talladega. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let, let's, let's reward him with this restart. Green flag back in the air for stage number two. Norm on the inside. Stone on the outside entering one. Oh, a little contact back in the pack. Uh, I think Lombard just door past her next time. Oh, oh look at the this. Board. We're looking. The eight, car, wide. the eight car is going to shove his way to the middle of the pack. Look at the 48 car, Michael Roos. Four wide entering three. Oh, this, is gonna gonna Woo, this is not going to work. This is not going to work. Somehow. Jimmy. Jimmy going to the lead at Chicago Land. And look to his outside. The 77 car drive through trying to recover from his slump. A couple races ago, and now up and he in had a second. Great run, and here comes Darian looking on the inside. He's, and more cars in the outside wall. Cassie Jr. and another purple car. That may have actually been Joey Stone. He's going to go all the way to the back of this path. But meanwhile, Roots on the bottom. He's got a train of cars pushing him. Whoa, look at the one car passing him. He's up in the mix as well. Darian just shut the door on entering three. Through the middle of three and four, Maroos gets a nice drive through there. And he clear him. Not, not quite in drive through. He's going to try to get on that corner panel and try to pull. Bruce and he back. does. He's going to do a crossover right here. Oh, ooh, oh, contact. That's not going to work. Up the they rest. Both up, and here comes Darien. Up the rest, there goes Maroon. Man, what a battle so far in these opening laps with stage number two. On the Abrams of 43 yeah, car, Diego. He's on the Abrams, but he's trying to make something happen. Get stuck up on that inside. Rusty's going to slide up a bit. Everyone gets through it clean. And normal hit the wall a little bit, but he saves it. Meanwhile, up front in the lead is the 77 car drive through. You got a battle for second with Maroots and Gilliam, and <laughs> seven or eight other cars trying to get in this. She just practically chopped off the nose of Darian Gilliam, and he's been a good run here. Oh, oh Darian! On, on the apron. Oh, oh and he hit faster now. Nine. Pass are going to come up here, but Maroots, he's going to try to hold tight on that door of Darian. Pass going to come off here, give Roots a shot. Wow, and all, all of these guys are getting an amazing run right here. And look, another guy coming. Oh, we got cars coming around. Oh, the 82 the car. 82 car Lombard, he oh, loses the, ground. Oh, pass up on the apron, and he saves it. What, what is this oh, racing? Oh, my goodness. What a save by Pasternak. He had all four tires underneath the white line going into turn one, and he saved it. We were trying to focus on up front. I forgot. You missed that. Apologies for that. But, oh, someone just got hit. So Maroots just got hit. Up in the wall goes Pasternak. I meant to say Pasternak, not Maroots. My apologies there. In the grass goes well, Kosi. All these guys are getting knocked on the grass on the apron, and they're saving it. Oh, and my goodness. Pasternak just went from ninth to then third to now back to 14. Wow. Meanwhile, you have the guy up front who needs to get as many points possible. Literally, he needs to have max points days here in the remaining race if he wants any shot at this championship. And that's drive through up front leading laps. And he's, he already has one bonus point now for leading a lap. And now he's going to hold out that eight car at Joey Stone to try to lead even more laps to try to get another bonus points for most laps led. I was just about to say, Joey Stone, he was in the back of the pack. He just hit the wall a few laps ago, and now he's already challenging for the lead. Oh, no. He was all the way back in about 11th or 12th. My goodness. Third is Diego. Fourth is Darian. And fifth, I believe that is Trey Normile, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, there we go, we got Diego. He's going to peek to the inside of Joey here a little bit. No, he's going to fall back in line. Okay, what's going to happen here? Drive through with being a little bit more defensive, not giving Joey an option to go inside, but he's, that's going to cause Joey to slip up a little bit. Here comes that 43. Diego trying to get a run on his left corner, not going to work. Diego, excuse me, drive through comes down low trying to break the draft, comes back up entering three. I mean, we know how aggressive Joey Stone is. You're going to have to be super duper aggressive if you want to hold him back. Oh, a little bit of uh, stack up right here back for fourth. I think uh, looks like Darian Gillum. 
He got on the apron. That slowed up the two car. And here comes Michael Merch making it three wide on the inside. And he's going to get past both the Raw Gator and Ed Soundhead. And a look at four of the lead. Joey Stone in the number eight car. Oh, contact down the back straightaway side by side. Now they're side by side. That's going to stall each other out. That's going to get the 43 oh. of Diego an opportunity to make something happen. Look like Di uh, Dragon tried to do a slide. I'm trying to move up in front of Joey Stone. It was not going to work. I would say it'd be too early for a slide job, but what we've <laughs> seen so far in stage two, I, I wouldn't pay, put it past some of these guys. And sure. Diego, he's gonna drive it down to the inside. He's got the draft help from drive through, but he's gonna slide up. I think Diego, his car, his car looks pretty good on entry into the center, but it just pushes up a little bit on exit, and that's not allowing him to get that drive down the straightaway. There's a lot of carnage here, folks. We know you see there, we're going to stick with this camera angle because not only can you see this better, you can also see a bit of the carnage behind you. Look at that. Three wide, looks like, for third place. For the lead, he got help from the Chevrolet camp of Stone and Alvarado. Alvarado going to try and maybe push Stone to the lead. He's got the advantage in the middle of one and two. And oh, there's two. still three wide. There's Oh, no, Darian gets the hits the line a little bit. And they save it again. We were looking about four wide coming off turn two. Everyone's just scrambling, trying to get in front of this pack. And here goes Roots. He's going to split the middle, and he's going to do a slide drive right in front of the pack. Oh, look at Normal. They're four wide. Woo, four wide. This is unbelievable. This isn't even for the lead. This is like for fourth place. <laughs> and they're still not giving up. Oh, pass and I can get loose in turn one. Looks Lombard, up. he hit the apron a bit. That's going to slide up and back to the second half of that pack up. But... We got like three, four packs of racing going on. We had the top three, and then we have the, the last three, and then we have everyone in between sitting right here in the second tap. My goodness, this is a recipe for disaster. Meanwhile, just yeah, while... it, it, this is this is disaster waiting to happen, <laughs> and it's gonna happen. Just just watch. It's gonna take a little bit, but. It will happen sooner or later. Just a little update right now. This You see up from the 77 car drive through still being and banging with the 8 car, Joey Stone. They are oh, but still. Joey Stone, he got a good runoff, and he may officially take the lead right here. And Yeah, he definitely will, but drive through, he got a great push from that 43. Not going to work, though. Oh, it looked like Joey hit the apron, maybe. He's going to wash up. Gonna open Going to open the door right there for drive through. He's going to get on that inside. <laughs> now drive throughs back again, trying to contend for the lead. Joey Stone led that lap. Oh, contact again and, there. And Joe got on the wall a bit, but Joey's doing the right thing on the straightaways. And that's oh. oh, and drive through hit the apron a bit. Oh, and that's going to cost him some saw, ground. But you, but, you saw, but you saw, too, that on the straightaway where, yeah, Joey could have, you know, kept a little bit tighter on drive through uh, through that trial hole. He actually kept him high a little bit, so drive through couldn't get any sort of side draft on him down the straightaway. So smart racing by him. And then, yep, drive through once again. He's going to peak low again. Right there, just Dead not... even right there at the line. Yeah, absolutely. And the 43 car, Diego, he's just sitting there. He's like a passenger in a, in a in this car right now. Oh, we got car around going into turn one, I believe. It's two of that Soundhead. Oh no, Soundhead spins, entering one. Oh, we got oh we got two cars getting loose and getting on the apron down the back straight away. It looks like the thirty eight and then the twenty and the twenty eight. Also, they get it going again, but all of that originated in that big pack, which has now got strung out a little bit. And look who's back up front, drive through. He's not back up in front, and now Joey Stone, he had a bit of a uh, competition with the 843 car, Diego, oh, we wow! Oh, for just a little bit. That's going to cause him a ton of ground. He put the bumper to him just a bit there, but obviously drive through. Oh, and here comes Diego, he's going to look at three wide, drive through has none of that, he's going to protect that outside lane. Joey to the inside now, he's going to get a nice run entering three drive and four. Drive through, he has to close on that corner panel, just couldn't do it, too much power underneath the hood of that eight car. Man, what a he's power He's going to clear him coming off. Oh, that was a that was a power move for how much he cleared him coming off the bottom and everything. It's he's got that's a great car in that number eight Chevrolet. And you saw the forty three car of Diego. He clipped the apron just a bit there, I believe, off of four, and that cost him a ton of ground. Uh, so it looks like first to third has calmed down a bit. Now let's go back to fifth place on back. The eighty five car normal in fifth. You got the sixth place driver of Letzel on the outside. Seventh is Darren Gilliam. And eighth is the 82 car of Lombard and some, Darren something, Pitts. Something, yeah, something to look to. I was about ready to say that some guy was starting to hit pit road. Jake Bassinger, he did hit pit road one lap one lap ago. Now Darren's the second car to hit. And now that we're in the window, we saw we saw a different amount of strategies last stage as far as guys wanting to stay out and whatnot. 
Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see here now with this, with this hard as some of these guys are racing, especially in that second pack. If they were really using up their stuff, they may need to pick here sooner rather than later. And <laughs> as man, this battle for lead is just not ending. Look who's back up front trying to contend. The 77 of drive through. Drive through, he had a two to three tenths of a second gap between him and Joey, and now he's back on his back bumper. You know what? I think drive through, he's been finally listening to me these past couple weeks because, because literally, yes, he won those first two races of the season and also had some good runs about those first five or six races. But after that, like this, like this, like this, the second third of this season has been terrible for drive through. He had a terrible run at Bristol, Watkins Glen. You know, we call him like kind of the road course ringer of this series just because he originates from. You know, I racing and a lot of road course racing over there. Uh, I was a big fan of the Pinty series as well. Being in Canada, looks like he's going to go low here. He may be sitting he's still down pit road. But then Indianapolis had a terrible run and last week at Darlington. So literally, nothing's gone for drive through at all these past few races. But he, showing some speed. And he is We're going to see what he does here on pit road. Gets in and on pit road. Good, good. And a good pit entry, too, for him. Something that, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, hasn't been too kind for him. Yeah, it has been too kind for a lot of people. Pit Road and uh, Prime Price, I like, guess, one of them. But yeah, I mean, you were talking about there, uh, Davin. I think during the pre race show, when you sort of called him out just a bit there uh, during your Power Five, and he's typed in the chat on how uh, you noticed. And uh, as you say, that might have given a bit of extra motivation. That, and he was my pick. So I think he realized that uh, the broadcast is watching him. As you see, the one car passing like now pitting clean. And another so too look some guys who have already pitted and come off pit road as well was the double zero Michael Cassie and the twenty eight car of Cody H. Uh, so those guys have made their pit stops as well. So uh, just under half of the field have made their green flag pit stops up to this point. And we should see uh, Joey Stone, the number nine uh, eight car, I should say. Uh, we can get our eyes on him. There he is. He's race leader. We should see him on pit road. In about seven or eight <coughs> laps so far. Top five right now runs is Joey Stone. Second place is Trav uh, Trey Normal. Third is 82 car Joseph Lombard. Fourth is Michael Maroots. And fifth is Brendan Littell. So it looks like Diego, he might have been a lap down. Well, remember, he did have to come down pit road there uh, at the end of stage one for some reason. So... Uh, he actually, made, yeah. So I think he may be one lap down here. Remember, he had to he had to make a second stop for some reason there at the end of stage two. So he may have been trapped one lap down already to that po or two laps down at that point. And actually, I think there was another car that was got a trapped a lap down as well. It may have been that fifty nine car, Rusty Wallace. So I think one of them got the free pass and the other one didn't. Now, right now, right now, uh, Rusty Wallace, he is still on the lead lap. Um, he's right out in the 12th spot. 22 car of Littell. He just came off pit road. He made his stop. And he's running out. And we got the... two more. Yep, got two more. Oh, Gator and Lombard coming down. But, uh, Jed, I keep a little bit of an eye on that 85 car when I switch to him right away. He may have been coming down a little bit too fast. If. If he wasn't fast, that was a perfect entry by him, but uh, let's keep an eye on his 85 and how long he's going to be in his box. Yeah, we're going to have our camera on the 82 car of Lombard just to see if he got a pit road speeding penalty or not. In about 10 seconds so far. Oh, it's 17. Oh, yep, Gator. Yep. Gator sped down pit road. Wow. Big time trouble for the 85 car. Look at all this ground he's going to lose now. It's not terrible. And I think, too, what he may have switched to a two-tire stop as well just because of that penalty. Because with the penalty in here being that as soon as as soon as soon service is done being performed on your car, they add 15 seconds to it. So, I, so it... it that stop is seen more in the realm of like about 20, 25 seconds. So if you would have taken four tires, it would have been on pit road for about 30 seconds. Uh, so I think Gator just trying to minimize as much damage as possible. I thought he came down pit road pretty fast. And that's going to cost him some ground. But again, luckily there is another stage. So as long another as guy coming off pit road is Roots. He just came off. 
Right now, your race leader. You see a little bad there for the fourth spot, I think. The one car and the 24 car. As Pasternak gets by him. The leader right now is still the eight car of Joey Stone. Look at that. Nothing in front of him. Clean air all around him. It's like a perfect drive here in your hometown, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a... Uh... It's not, it's a, it, I, I promise you, it is nowhere near as warm as it looks like on track here in the virtual world as it is <laughs> up here right now. We got snow. If anything, this track right now in real life is more suited for a snowmobile race. Yeah, the track shouldn't be this green in real life. Nah, it's way too green. It's way too pretty. <laughs> All right. Curious. I want, I'm curious as to, like, this what's uh, Joey's strategy right here because now that practically everyone's pitted uh, he's just kind of losing time right now staying out there on those old tires and we saw last stage how even though Trey took two tires and Joey had four so, oh and we got trouble coming off coming down pit road I think Diego all around and he tried getting down pit road he spun it down to the inside oh. grass and he was in second place I thought at first he was left down but he was in second place so that is not what Diego needed. He had a good car, was out there battling for the lead there for a bit. Yeah, not, yep, and here comes Joey down pit road. I was just about to say that now that everyone's pitted, I'm gonna, I was going to assume that he's going to come down pit road here, and it looks like he will. There he is. Now we have to see if maybe the one car passed or not, because he wasn't third. At the time, and I think I think the guy that we're gonna have to keep an eye on is drive through because he pitted uh, several laps, about ten laps before Joey Stone did. So he's gonna have a whale of a lead over Sloppy, I believe, when this is all said and done. So right now he's just coming into turn three here. And he's right just now. coming off the of four right now. Yeah, right. Yeah, he will be able to take the lead, maybe if. Clear Joey Stone. Let's see where the eight car is. There he is. No, I, no, he's. Oh, back I, I, out I think front. Slop, Sloppy. He may have taken a true tire stop. Really? Oh yeah, because I mean, think yeah, he about did. It, like he did. He took right sides. Yeah. Well, no, I want to. I'm curious to see if that 77, if he can track down Sloppy, we'll see if like four older tires can run down two fresh ones, but I want this, I want to keep an eye on this eight car to see how differently his car handles, just because just of how much wear is on those left sides and with how fresh those right sides are, uh, hopefully that's not too much of an imbalance for him. Yeah. So far, it looks like that uh, it looks pretty all right. Yeah, right now, three and a three, nearly four seconds behind is, as you see, the one car pass and I get by drive through. Four seconds behind with four lap, four or five laps to go. So it's going to be pretty close. But if they don't catch him, brilliant call by the eight car. Yeah, that, and then, like, you know, think about too, his two championship contenders sitting right there at second and third. Him being up front right now, that's not allowing those guys to rack up laps led and. That precious extra bonus point, and it keep, I know we keep saying points matter, but just go look back at Atlanta, folks. One point was all that was, and so just ask Brian Pastor next. He knows how important one extra point is. Let's see if we can find some other drivers. See the two car at Soundhead he walks down. Battle for second. Now the 77 car is all over the back bumper of Pasternak. Going to try and maybe get by him back before this race is over. A little bit of a battle back here as well between, I think, the 82 and the 28. 82 and Lombard just got around the 28 of Cody H. Let's see. We'll see what position that is for. Right now, just a little update on first and second place. Uh, what if racing has only gained nearly a second 
on Joey Sewing. We've got two, now one and a half laps remaining here. Oh, and what oh. to slap the wall coming off turn two. Yeah, we just saw a, a, a tiny speck of a car just go way below the racetrack. One car well, passing. Well, also the 77 dropped pretty far back as well, so I think both of them had an issue. Probably driving too hard trying to get some ground. White flag is out one lap to go in stage number two. So far, eight car of Joey Stone hasn't been quite, I want to say he's been the dominant car so far tonight. There's been others up there as well, but he has been towards the top two, top three all night and didn't get stage one win, but he's going to win stage two. Yeah, I think that's his probably fourth or fifth stage win this season. Joey Stone wins stage number two here in the John Deary 200. Just something we want to mention too. I just saw it. Raw Gator hit pit road. But I want to know if, because he actually came down pit road, I believe, right, bef right before, as Joey Stone was coming to the line, if yeah. he did not get lapped by Joey before he crossed the line, this is going to be a brilliant call by Gator. Well, one thing I have to remember, this was done at Indianapolis with drive through Cody H Gaming, and I think another driver, I think Brian Pasternak also. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the core league banned that move. Well, that's what I was say too, because he came because uh, Gator came down pit road coming to the white. Yeah, that he didn't, he didn't come down pit road coming to the checkered, but also it, it's going to be a matter of inches if Sloppy Joe lapped Gator while he was on pit road before Gator got to his pit box. Yeah, also to point out that um, if it's you know if it's against the rules or not, right now no word, we're not really sure of it. But restart now for stage number three. On the inside. And it, looks like he, and it looks like he did get lapped as well. All right. Joey Stone on the inside. Brian Pasternak on the outside. Green flag is in the air for stage number three. Drive through immediately fall in the line right there behind Michael Cassie, and that's just going to drop. What if straight to the back? Cassie got on the apron a little bit. A lot of jostling for position right bit. now. Oh, and here comes that 48 car on the inside of Cody H for a second, oh. and he's going to go on underneath drive through as well. That 48 car has been pretty aggressive here on restarts, but he's been able to make some of these moves work. Huge head of steam from that 48 car. He's right now going to settle in, bunched up in fourth place right now. He's got the 80, excuse me, the 77 car pass next to his uh, drive through, I should say, to his outside. And meanwhile, Pratt's oh, like he's going to get the double zero a shot Woo. right there. And then that left rear quarter panel sends Michael Cassie Jr. up the track. 48 car up to third place. Oh, bit of contact between, I think that was the two. Yeah, it was the two and I think the 24 or the 82 car. I'm not sure, but those were the contact between those two. Oh, drivers. and Joey Stone hit the wall. Here goes Brian Pasternak to the lead. Pasternak to the lead, and look who's in second underneath Joey. Here comes Mr. Roots up to P2. And look at all the ground Joey Stone is losing. Going straight to the back. It's going to be three wide off Four the wide. Four wide. Now back Michael to three Cossie, wide. Michael Cossie backed out of it, but still it's three by three right here. Joey Stone trying to make that outside lane work. He may brush this wall and exit. And he, he does. does. Oh, man. Now he's going to fall back big time. Meanwhile, back up front now. Your leader, Brian Parsonak, second place. Is the 48 car of Michael Moritz. Look who's in third. The Daytona oh 250 goodness. winner, Cody Hicken. He has been, it has not really been a season either for Cody oh. Hicken. He, there's been, oh, we got yeah, trouble. More, yeah, we saw contact. Rusty Walt, I think White Car. Yeah, the, the two and the 85. Into the 85. Oh, and Norma hits the wall again. Danny B also hit the wall. Well, guys are strung out a little bit here, and, uh, Chad, I, I need to tell you, you know, it's my home track. I love this place so much. And also, with Queen Lee being gone last week, I kind of missed my favorite segment, <laughs> if, if, you, if you know what I'm talking about. I, I think I do. Let's celebrate with the return of Cody Workman at his hometown track with the Windy City edition of Heart.
Oh, Cody H, he got really loose coming off turn two. And look who's he now got... in the mix, the two-car sound head. It was not too far ago in stage two. He made a terrible mistake getting out of the pit road with spun him the inside wall, but he's made his way all the way back up through to the top five. Yeah, a huge rebound for the two-car of Ed Soundhead. He has been gone since race three at Homestead, and right now it's a pretty good return. Now he's going to have the opportunity to battle for the third spot to the outside of Michael Maroots. Yeah, Maroots falling backwards right now. 82 car Lombard got inside the Maroots, but Maroots, he ain't going to give that fourth place spot up. He's going to try to get underneath, underneath the two car, and while these two are side by side, that oh, eight car is Stone hit the wall again. He doesn't have anywhere to go, and that backed him up. Like, we saw it there right in the middle of three and four. He had such an amazing closing rate of speed on Maroots that he hit his back, his, his uh, rear bumper, and that just pushed him up the racetrack. Man, the A car Joey Sony has hit the wall, I think, three, four times in the past few, four or five laps so far in this stage. He's not falling yeah, back I think, to seventh place. I think, I think place. what he's got to do right here is like, oh, it looks like Maroots, he's slipped up a little bit. He's going to get the inside of Maroots here. Maroots going to lose about two or three spots. Cody H is also going to the inside of him. Oh, and Cody oh, H. Drove. Sloppy went. Sloppy wasn't protecting that inside. That gave Cody H the green light to take that spot. He drove it in there, looks like, in there in one and two. And now Stone falls back to eight. How about Cody Hicken? I mean, I, we haven't really talked about him a whole lot. Oh, oh he, he just moves Cody up the racetrack. And that's going to put Ed in the wall. Yeah, that's going to lose about four or five spots. But yeah, Joey Stone just moving Cody H style away. And the guy who gets the worst end of the stick on now is that two car. Wow. And also, Joey, he may have gotten, a, I think he may have gotten. Yeah, he hit the apron. He was boxed and, in. And that, and that backed up everyone up behind him. Yeah, yeah, now look at this battle. The 28, the 48, the double zero, and the 43, and the two car now. Six cars oh, or so Cody under a blanket. Oh, and the apron a little bit. Ooh. Here comes Maroots now to the outside. Yeah, he's got help from that 43 car of Diego. Oh, whoa. Oh, and Cody gets loose again. He's going to hit that apron. He gets in the Maroots. Up the track goes Maroots, and by goes Hicken and Kasi Jr., as well as the two car Soundhead. Who's gonna go to the middle? Oh, someone's way oh. off track. Oh, the 20, 21 oh. car. Danny B, who's straight up to apron? I think I think there's not gonna be any cars right here. It's still green. Everyone gets going away all right. Yeah, he slid up right in front of Jake Baskinger. Surprising there wasn't a caution. Oh, I want to look at Roots right oh, here. He's oh, looking way low. Oh, he's on oh and in the wall goes Maroots. I right, have uh, Coach Jr. I should say, and the 28 car of Hicken. Yeah, something, something was going on on that front straightaway. Roots really dove to the bottom. He was still on the apron coming through the dog leg on the tri-oval. And I think it was just too many people side by side, even for the same piece of real estate. Wow. Well, that sort of um, broke off this whole battle. Meanwhile, here's another battle to look for. This battle, for, I believe, for third place. Lombard, Stone, and the 85 card of Trey Normile. Josh Sloppy, he just faked high and he dodged down low, was able to fake out Lombard, and he's also getting that push from Gator. Move Joey up to the third position, and he's got to get up to that lead as quickly as possible because the last car, that is the one car he does not want to see leading laps right now, that one car at Pasternak. He's been leading practically since the, the beginning of this stage. Yeah, uh, you saw Joey Stone pass his uh, Lombard with ease. Second place right now is drive through. We're starting to see that big three come back once again now. And then also Lombard, you know, he's ranked number three in the power five. He's up there on the back bumper, Joey Stone, as well. The past two weeks, he's had winning cars. He finished he's finished uh, second in Indianapolis, and he had a good top five run last week at Darlington, and here he is running fourth place again. Don't count him out as well, as well as the 85 car of Gator. He's shown... He didn't have those first few races of the season go his his way necessarily, but some of the other places that he's been to. Remember, he finished second as Martinville, only guy that could really compete with Michael Cassie Jr. there, and kind of threw it away with the pit penalty, and then had an opportunity late on a late race restart and couldn't get the job done there. So you know he's going out for blood here. Absolutely, he's now loses the another spot to the 85 car Trey Normile. 
Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, next week, next Thursday, I should say, at the Talladega Super Speedway, Core League Racing, Talladega 250, presented by Alex Diego. Diego, I should say, next Thursday again at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the Core League YouTube channel. It's going to be a fun race there. It's already been a fun race here at Chicagoland. Hey, if, you, if, you were to ask, if you were to ask me, there were points in this race, especially in stage two, that it looked like Talladega between <laughs> guys being three wide, four wide, and it's kind of strung out right now, but uh, this will be, if we have a caution here that stacks everything up here late race, especially once everyone can make it to the end here, because everyone does have to make one final pit stop, uh, but it's going to be about within about, everyone's going to have to pit here within a, like, not within the next five laps, but the entire cycle is going to take place within about a three, four to five lap period, just because of how long these guys are going to have to push it here in this run to try to make it to the end. It looks like the 77 has not been able to gain any ground on the one car pass tonight. Just been able to maintain. It looks like also even the eight car was Joey Stone. He hasn't been able to gain any ground on uh, Cornelius. Well, actually, like just kind of well, remember too. I think when Sloppy got put all the way back there in that pack, he he's basically had to drive through that whole pack a couple times, even after getting shuffled back once he got into that top five. So he's definitely used more of his tires up to this point. So we may see him uh, come down pit road as soon as that window opens. Uh, drive through, he's just falling off the draft, and he also made a mistake right there, hit that apron. He's going to lose a ton of time right there, but right now the guy that's in the best shape right now, and it's not just because he's the leader, Brian Pastor, that he's been in front this entire stage, and he's just been able to run nice, clean, and consistent lines, not being, not having to use up his tires at all. Uh, he has a couple options to play with regarding if he wants to pit early, uh, in the middle, or later if he wants to. Yeah, hey, I was just about to ask you that with pit stops, sir. Should be coming up pretty soon. Uh, well, Ron Gator's on pit road right now. Well, remember, it's around 31 laps to go or so, so... Not surprised to see pit stops begin. Uh, but just about to ask you, though, with Pastor Knight as a race leader, uh, we saw how good two tires work with Joey Stone. Do you think Pastor Knight should try and do that, or should he just play it safe and go with four? Uh, well, everyone's going to have to take two. There's going to have to take four tires right here. I mean, I think two tires would basically uh, do you in and just kind of guarantee you not have a good finish at all. Um, just because, you know, you're practicing. Basically, in this stage, everyone is practically going to have to go two full runs just shy of just a couple laps. Because remember, pit window 30, 32 laps, and this final stage was in the range of about 55 laps. So that's almost two full runs. So making your car have to go two full runs on the, uh, with the left side tires. Uh, oh, oh, someone's spinning. Oh, the 21 car, Danny B, and Trey Normal slides up into the 38 car. Pa and, the 38, and the 38 car, he spun around as well. Um, I think that might bring out a caution. Maybe. It... No, Pasternak is still under power going on the back stretch. We're no caution. Wow. That is, um, shocking. I, I thought for sure there'd be a caution there. Yeah, I'm kind of kind of confused about that one as well. I kind of, I caught the tail end of that, and all that I saw was just the 38 car spinning around. Wow. Okay. But yeah, but well, definitely, but that, but definitely, that kind of, at least, I guess, a good thing for those guys that have already pitted is that like it definitely, but a caution is definitely what those guys that have pitted already did not want to see because that would have trapped them down another lap and they would have to stay out to get a wave around. And so. Uh, maybe a good thing that the cars are going to come out, but uh, some guys are starting to hit pit road, and one of them being the 48 car of Roots. Last year's winner. He's going to forfeit forfeit his spot. I think he was in the top six or so. Pretty nice run for that 48 car. Yeah, he's shown, he shown runs of speed, and he was up there a little bit towards this run, but I think, you know, when that second pack was battling up a bit, and then Joey getting through there, making some aggressive moves, and hitting the apron once or twice, it kind of backed up that second pack. So Mertz, he hasn't. I mean, he's running mid pack right now, but I'm sure you know he'd be wanting to run up there in that top three. And look at the battle for second place heating up right now. Oh, the one car pass tonight goes down below the apron. Yeah. Signals he's going to pit road. As well so, as so, 77. so does 70. Yeah, these two are probably going to come down pit road right here. And 
Joey's... I think that means we'll. I think that means we'll see the eight car try to stay out here as many laps as possible. Yeah, just we... for the sole purpose of the one car staying out. I think the one car got it on pit road clean, but just keep an extra. Oh, eye oh, on. Oh, oh, oh! A lot of people coming. Oh, the forty-three road. and the two spin. Several spinning around. Diego spins entering pit road. That's I think the it second is rush, time. It is, it is rush hour on pit road right now. We, I saw a great car just lose it off of four, and that was the 43 car. The two car had sounded, he was able to keep going. Look at this little <laughs> issue right here. We got a lot We got a lot of people coming down. One car, 77, of driving oh. the 82 of Lombard. Oh, my Austin goodness. Jr. Oh, my goodness. No way. Um, oh, the, oh the, 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 the Darian Gillum get forced out of the yeah, pit he, box? Yeah, yes, he did. Yes, oh he did. Oh, my goodness. We, I, we were watching same thing there. With Diego, same thing with Diego Alvarado last week at uh, Darlington where he was trying to come into his pit box. drive through was starting to come out, and he wasn't able to pit because of that. You know, oh, we, no, and what if he oh. hits the apron trying to come up here as well as drive through? So one car slams in the drive through coming off of turn two. Someone else is spinning. The 82 car of Lombard, I think he was on the grass. Yeah, oh, the, drive, oh drive and Latell spins. Drive through. There's a bunch of guys that hit the apron coming off of turn two, and their car spun around. One of them being drive through. Drive through spun coming. Uh, hit hit the apron, trying to come off the apron onto the racetrack. Oh, He's, oh, oh and Diego! Diego spins up right in front of Spin drive through. Unbelievable! No caution. Uh, two cars. And luckily, you had the two car of Soundhead, Roots, Kasi Jr., and Walrus. They were all able to sneak through that. This is the last thing either driver of what if or drive through needed. I mean, they both need to have good runs, especially drive through. He needs to get back in the championship contention, and he had a good run up until that moment. Well, well, what if too? He, I mean, he got loose coming off there, but he didn't. He didn't fully go around. He just had to go way to the bottom of the racetrack. And I think this is attempt number three for Diego getting on the pier. He definitely spun right there, so we're, we're gonna see a speeding penalty at that 43 car. Diego, he, he just has not been able to get on pit road at all tonight. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it earlier on during that little uh, uh, segment we there we had there before the race. Pit road is going to be a factor. And my golly, it was. Two of our leaders wrecked off of pit road. Yeah, Diego spin into on pit road. D Darian was forced out of his pit box from Michael Cossie Jr. And, um, and uh, you, um, so you don't know, right now he just typed into the... DM chat, simple three words, GG Heat 4. I mean, this is going to be a talking point in the entire season. Yeah, it's just unfortunate, you know, how many times, how many races, especially with, you know, top running contenders, how we've seen pit road and game glitches be a sign factor in this race. And so, um, I know, I know, uh, Justin, the new community manager, uh, he's been very, uh, present as far as like in these leagues and wanting to hear feedback and I mean that's at least good to see him being involved in the community and so with that I hope you know he's able to see just all the unfortunate instances, instances that we've seen here regarding pit road and everything about you know just how this game glitch has been the deciding factor in, in too many of these races unfortunately yeah right now I mean all this does is just help the eight car of Joey Stone because um, they and he closed on the back bumper of that one car. So Joey Stone, that that mistake made by Pasternak getting loose coming off turn two, that erased his two second lead that he had over Joey. And then plus Joey Stone, he has a couple lap fresher tires right now. So what Brian Pasternak needs to do is that until that their tires need to start until their tires start evening evening out here. Sloppy, he will have the advantage at the beginning of this run, but as we get about halfway through this run, their tires are going to start to even out. So Brian, at least for this first half of the run here to the end, he's got to do everything and drive pretty aggressive to try to keep that eight car behind them because it could be pretty hard to try to get back around that eight car and try to keep up with them. Yeah, right now your race leader is an 85 car, Trey Normal. He's not that far ahead in front of this battle for second place between Pasternak and Joey Stone. And he was, he was the first car to come down pit road as well, so he yeah, does right. have the oldest tires. That, that is right. So, yeah, I definitely think these two will, will run down Gator with ease. 
Um, however, they get there and it's going to be about the same time period. Also, too, I was kind of thinking that Gator, he may have paid it a bit earlier, I think. So he's definitely the one guy I'm going to keep an eye on as far as being able to make it to the end. I think everyone else should, no problem. Gator, though, as far as from a tire standpoint, may be a little bit close for him. Look at Joey Stone. He is all over his back bumper. Look like maybe have tried to, maybe what I could see Joey Stone might do is push the one car passion. Like maybe give him more speed than what Passion like wants to. Oh, we got two cars together going into turn three. 28 car of Cody H. He got into the Latell, squeezed Latell into the wall. They saved him. That was right in front of that 43 car, Diego Alvarado. They get it going again, but some rough racing going on, on here in the back. And one thing you also see is the 24 car of Darren Gillum. He's back on pit road. Meanwhile, he he may have retired for the evening because he's been on. He was on there a minute ago as well. Oh, okay. I mean, had a tough break for him there. Meanwhile, the lead has shrunken tremendously. Look there at how no, much ground. There is, there, there is no lead. And the Gator hit the apron. That's going to back up this one car. Oh. Here comes the eight car of Joey Stone to the outside. Oh, and he put him in the wall. Wide. Oh, I thought he was about to put him in the wall there. Here comes Stone to the outside. Three car battle for the lead entering three. Passer that just chose the wrong lane. He's going to choose the wrong lane again. Another terrible entry for Gator. And eight that, car of Joey Stone to the lead. And all that did was just hurt Brian's chances <laughs> of possibly battling with Joey Stone for the lead. Got held up by a slower 85 car. And that is going to hinder his process tremendously. And he's still and he's, holding and he's him still up. getting held up. Yeah. Brian, he is choosing. He is just. He is choosing the worst lane possible. In the past couple of corners, finally get, get to the inside of Trey. But two, like one full lap, two corners in a row. Brian, just getting right behind that bumper of that 85. If anything, I would have. If I was Brian, I would have maybe taken a look to that outside, just knowing how old those tires were in that 85. But a car, Joey Stone, he took full advantage of that. And he passed two cars on one straightaway. Now, do you think Brian has the opportunity to maybe catch up to him? Because remember, you did say Joey, he did pit one lap after Brian. So he does have fresher tires. But do you think them battling for, at that time, second place might have evened it out? Well, it wasn't even one lap. I think it was like uh, two or three laps, if anything. So it's a couple laps better. But I think we'll start to see things even out here a bit, like, I think they should be even now, possibly by now. But still, I think Brian, he just needs to try to get back through that slipstream of air and try to get back in that draft of the A car of Joey because Joey, he's actually starting to pull away just slightly. Man, and we, I mean, Brian at that time for second, it looked like he had him held there back for third at that time. And then as soon as uh, Trey Norman came into the picture, I just messed up the whole process for Brian. And now, yeah, you're right. Joey, he's just starting to slowly but surely open a gap between him and Brian. Oh, oh no, I think Pastor Neck just disconnected. What? No way. Pastor, I was watching. Oh my Brian goodness. Pastor Neck has disconnected from.